Hey, in this video, we're going to be creating a fully working login, register, and forgot password process for an app using Svelte 5, SvelteKit, and Node.js. Authentication will just be done from a PostgreSQL database with no third-party login frameworks. We'll just be creating all this ourselves from scratch. I'm going to assume you know some things about Svelte and SvelteKit. If not, check out my other videos explaining the basics of each. I'm also not going to explain the look of the site so much, as you'll have your own design, I'm sure. We'll focus more on how it works, uh, but I'll be using the style from my Tailwind login tutorial. So if you want more details on how the Tailwind classes create the UI, you're going to see. Check out that video as well. To start off, I'm using Visual Studio Code with Svelte and Tailwind plugins installed. We'll create a brand new Svelte app in the current folder using npx sv create, followed by the app name. We'll choose TypeScript and include Tailwind in the add-ons. And once that's done, to open our new app, just cd into that folder and type code-r period to open it in the same window. Now first, let's create our routes. In the routes folder, we have a login, create, logout, change, and forgot folder. On the login screen, the user will have a forgot password and create account option, which are kind of self-explanatory. But when the user chooses forget password, they'll get sent an email, and that email will have a link to a change password form. Once the user is able to successfully log in either way, they'll get sent to the main page of the site. If the user is not logged in and attempts to visit the main page of the site, they'll of course get sent to the login page. In our login page starting off, I'll create a plus page.svelt file. And in here, I'm going to copy and paste the HTML from the Tailwind login tutorial. And also grab the background image I used there. And if we run the app with npm run dev and visit that page, here's what it looks like starting out. Now let's add a forgot password link at the bottom. And make sure both links point to the right route. Again, I won't go into details on the styling, so we'll just fast forward through most of the classes and CSS stuff when you see it. Also, I need to give all these inputs a name attribute so they can be sent back when our form submits. The login tutorial I did for Tailwind was just about the look and didn't actually work. Now let's work on a create account page. We'll come back to the login once we actually have an account to log in with. And for simplicity, let's use the exact same HTML as a login. Let's just change the header and add a confirm password box and change the button and also change the bottom links. Now to actually make this work, let's wrap it in a form. We'll set the action to question mark slash create and a method to post. And when someone submits the form, the data will go to a matching plus page.server.ts file in the same folder. So let's go ahead and create that now. In this new file, we'll export an actions function. And in that function, look for our action we named our form, which we called create. This function will get the data from the request in the parameter, like this. And then each put from the data can be retrieved like this. And while I'm here, I forgot to rename the second password something else. There we go. We'll do some checks to make sure everything is filled out and also to compare the passwords. And if anything happens to be wrong, we'll return the built-in fail function from SvelteKit with a message. If it's fine, we'll save this new user to the database. Again, we're using PostgreSQL, and I have a helper function to make connecting and checking for errors easier. Here's the file under the lib folder. It's, again, taken from my basic login tutorial, but I also have a full video on it on the SQL part itself if you want to know more on how this file was set up. Also, here's the schema for the database. We have extensions enabled for doing the password hashing 
into the database. And we have extensions for generating GUI IDs. We also have a users table with the bare minimum info, a session table to store the status of their login and the matching user, and then a table to store info about requested password resets. And all this, of course, can be done in any database that you use, like MySQL or whatever. Just make sure you have similar tables and that you know the actual code needed to run the queries. And then you can just replace what I write with what you know how to do, of course. Now that we have a helper function, though, we can create the new user by typing an insert statement for it. And as you can see, we have placeholders for the input because we're using prepared statements, as you should. Then we create a variable that will hold the result of calling a query on our helper function. This query wants the SQL statement as the first parameter and then the parameters for the prepared statement as the second parameter. Notice here how we are not storing the password as plain text in the database. We are hashing it with the built-in function PostgreSQL has. And make sure you're doing something similar if using a different type of SQL server. Also, our PostgreSQL insert statement can return the new user back because we have the returning asterisk at the end. We'll need that new user's ID in order to set the session and cookie next. The result of the insert statement will be an array of rows, but we just need the user ID from the first row, so row zero. We then do another insert statement to add a session to the session table. We'll send this one the user ID and set the expiration date to be eight hours from now, all using the database. This will also be set to return just the GUI ID that was created. Then we take this and store it in a cookie. And then to get access to the cookies first, we need to go up into the parameters and include it up there. And then in the built-in cookie, dot set function, we can give it a name and set the value to be the session GUI ID. And then finally, we'll send a redirect response because if they successfully created an account and are now logged in, we can just send them to the root of the website. And then also back on the form page, we need to do something after it's submitted. So to get the response, I'm going to add the use enhance action to our form and up in the script tag, use the props rune to get the form object, which contains the response information. The redirect though will be handled automatically on its own, but we do need to check for our fail messages. So wherever we want to show, like above the header here, we can do an if statement to check if form.message exists, and if so, show the message in a red box maybe. And let's try it out. Oh, and here I forgot to install the PG package for PostgreSQL. So just doing that. Okay, trying it out. And there we go. We get the appropriate error messages based on what we submitted. And if we actually do it correctly, we get sent to the home page. And also notice if you look in the developer tools, we do have the proper cookie set. All right, so we successfully got the create account page working. But let's spruce up the home page so that we can add a logout button now. Again, I'm going to steal all the HTML and the logo from my basic login tutorial. But the main thing here is that we now have a logout icon on top. This page really doesn't do much else. The link just points to the slash logout path. And to get that working, let's go in that folder and add a simple plus server.ts file. We don't need a full-on Svelte component or page here, as all it's going to do is run some code and redirect the user back. So we can use uh, API endpoint type file. In this file, we'll make a simple get endpoint in Svelte Kit, which looks something like this. We'll need access to the cookies, so you add that to the parameters on top. And then we'll grab the cookie, expire in the database if we found it, And then also delete the cookie. And make sure when you're deleting cookies, all the settings match when you created it. Otherwise, you might have issues. And at the end, we're going to redirect them to the login route. And all these things are built into Svelte Kit besides our database helper function. And now if we click on the logout, we'll get sent to our login page. And also, the cookie is gone too, as it should be. 
So let's make the login page work now that we have a test user to try. So let's add the form wrapped around the div. The action will be slash login this time. And then let's create the matching page plus server.ts file where the form submission will go. And that'll have to be in the same folder, of course. It'll be almost the exact same as our create script. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste the whole file. In there, let's just change the function name to login and get rid of the second password check. And down here, instead of an insert statement, we'll do a select statement. This will compare the email lowered and the password in the database. Again, notice the password hashing is handled by the database. We are comparing the submitted password hashed to the already hashed password to see if they match. There's no plain text stored anywhere. If there is no result, that means the user didn't exist or the password is wrong. So let's return a fail message if there is no row zero. And the rest is about the same. We'll save the session, set a cookie, redirect to the home page. Back on the login HTML Svelte component, add the progressive enhancement, the use enhance to the form, and add the form props on top, and copy and paste the same if statement that'll show an error. And there we go. We get the correct error based on what we type in or not type in. And if we do it right, we do get sent to our home page and we can click log out and go back to the login. Next, we need to force a login though, because if you see here, we can still get to our home page even if we're not logged in, which isn't good. To do a login check, we can add Svelte Kit's hook.server.ts file to the SRC folder of our website. This file gets ran for every single page request, so we can check for the cookie and redirect if necessary on every page here. In this file, we add the handle request, and at the bare minimum, we need to take in the event and a returning resolve function and return it. But in between here is where we're gonna grab the cookie. If we found it, we're gonna check it in the database and also at the same time return the user ID that was found. If we found a row in the database for that, we're going to set something called the event locals to be the user ID. And the locals object is available on all your pages as well if you need to read it. But in order to store user ID in it, we need to go into our app.d.ts file and specify that a user ID property is now contained in the locals. And then we just set it like this. Then after that, below the if statement, we need to check if the user isn't on one of these pages, login, create, forgot, or change. And if the user ID is not set in the locals. And if all that is true, that's when we want to redirect them to the login page. All those page checks will prevent a loop as we don't want to redirect them if they are on those pages because those pages don't require a login. Now if we attempt to reach the home page, we see the login instead. Next, let's work on our forget password page. This will just have a box for an email and a submit button, so we can probably steal our login code. It's more similar. In our login code we stole, we can just change the header, get rid of the password input, change the button text, and the links. Also, let's go up to the form and change the action to forgot. Also, let's copy and paste our login script into the forgot folder as well. And in that file, change the function name from login to forgot. Remove the references to the password here. And change the SQL to find them by email only. Also, if it wasn't found, we won't show an error. We don't want people using that to search our database for valid users. We instead want to pretend like it worked. But if we happen to get past that, we need to create a new password reset row in the database. This table will allow us to track reset requests and not allow the same email link to work twice or not allow it to work after a certain amount of time. It'll also be how we find the user from the email link. The link will contain this table's GUI ID instead of something more sensitive like their email or user ID and it just makes the process more secure. Then we send the email. To do that I'm going to use the node mailer package for that. 
So I just need to do npm install and also install the matching app types package. Then we can specify a connection to our email server like this. Again, I'm inserting my details from a .env file, but you can just insert them right in here or have your own env file, whatever. Then I'm going to create a variable that will hold the HTML text for the email. In here, I'm making a link that will contain the reset request GUI ID in the URL. And then from that, we can run a .sendmail function on it. And in here, give it the from and to address and the subject and the HTML body. And then in the end, instead of redirecting, we'll send a success message. Back on the forgot forum, let's look for this success message below our error check and maybe show a green box instead if we find it. Let's fill out this form now with the email we used to sign up. And it looks like we got an error because we forgot to send the parameters to our SQL code here. So we'll just fix that. And there we go. We can see the green message now. I would probably make a loader or something on here as the email code might take a little bit to run and you don't want users to think that it froze. But for now, we'll skip that. And also, if I look at my email, here's what it looks like. The buttons link goes to our change URL route and it has a GUI ID in the query string. And let's make that change page now. This will be most similar to the create new account page. So let's copy and paste that into the folder. Change the forms action to change. Change the wording of the header. Remove the email field and rename password to maybe new password instead. And also change the button and remove the link. A new thing we need to add here though is a hidden input to pass the GUI ID with. So add a hidden input field and have the value be the GUI ID from the URL, which you can grab like this. And make sure to import page from state and not from store. And here it is also in the HTML with the GUI ID in the URL. Let's again copy the server code from the create page to the change page because it's pretty similar. We'll change the function here to change, remove references to email this time, but we need to add a new one that looks for the GUI ID input. Then below we need to get the password reset request from the database by GUI ID, but only if it hasn't been completed yet and if the date requested has been within the last seven days. And of course you can adjust this to whatever you want. If that returns nothing, we'll send back an error. But if it does work, we'll grab the user ID from that row, change the password in the database for that user, update the password reset table to say it was completed for this GUI ID, and then below, set the cookie and the session, just like we did with the login page. And this page is pretty secure. Somebody would have to guess the GUI ID of a reset row, and it would have to be one that wasn't done yet, and that was requested less than seven days ago. So all that's pretty highly unlikely. Now let's go back to our form and try it out. I'm gonna change the password to test2. And you can see we get sent to the home page because we're logged in after changing it. And if I log out and try the new password, it works. And there we go. A secure, self-made database authentication setup. If you have any questions about this or if I missed anything, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for checking this out.